Welcome everybody to our GINA seminar. Our speaker today is uh, Tony Ahn and he got his PhD uh, from the University of Tennessee at Knoxville and then he was at MSU for a postdoc and now he's at Texas A&M. And today he will tell us about the first neutron-rich beam-induced alpha XN reaction study with a habanero detector. So yeah, please go ahead. Thank you, Ingo. So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Sanghan Tony An, and I'm working at the Cyclotron Institute at the Texas A&M University. Uh, thank you for joining this seminar, and uh, I'm very pleased and excited to uh, give a presentation at Jena CEE uh, since I have been working at the center until last summer, and. Uh, I can now I can share uh, the pro the the progress of this uh, project. So today the title of my talk is first neutron rich beam induced alpha and uh, reaction study of XN uh, reaction study with the habanero detector. Here alpha XN meaning alpha one N and alpha two N, uh, for example. And uh, simply the story of my talk is that the uh, ele uh, elements are uh, created in the star and uh, nuclear reaction uh, happening in the stars. So I hope I can deliver well enough. Uh, and feel free to uh, ask, stop me and ask a question if you have any uh, during my talk. So uh, before I begin, I want And uh, I really appreciate their effort and this is a uh, quite big uh, collaboration, and I call it as a habanero uh, collaboration. And this is the outline of my talk. I want to introduce the abundance patterns and nucleotensis in the stars, and I will open the question uh, why we need to measure affine cross-sections. And I will um, uh, show, uh, I will uh, present the uh, the how we can measure, what kind of detector we need to measure this uh, off and cross sections, and how, uh, how we develop it, and uh, how we commission the detector. And we'll uh, show the result of the first neutron rich beam induced off and cross section measurement, and I will end up with outlook and summary. So it is very well known that the abundance pattern of elements uh, in the stars are the outcome of nuclear reactions occurring in the stars, so-called nuclear synthesis process. And this slide shows the uh, nuclear chart uh, with some examples of uh, nuclear synthesis passes and proton numbers on y-axis and neutron number on x-axis. And the process paths are determined uh, depending on the uh, astronomical uh, environment, such as thermal profile of uh, st stars. And it is critical to understand uh, the uh, spectroscopic factors uh, involved in the, uh, uh, the, the process, the sp spectroscopic factors of nuclei, involved nuclei uh, involved in this process is very important such as the mass of nuclei, or Q value, or half light time, or uh, beta delayed neutron probability, and level densities and reaction rates, or uh, cross-sections. I will focus on the story of the reaction rate or cross-section, uh, how uh, big uh, of the effect of the reaction rates impact to the process. Uh, as the resolution of uh, astronomical observations get better and better, uh, astro astronomers started to looking at the old stars, uh, such as metal, metal core halo stars, uh, since we believe that they are very old, which is uh, born in early stage of universe, and preserve the abundance composition of the location and time of their formation. And surprisingly, there are many questions found in the observations. For example, uh, shown on the left plot, uh, the abundance plot of one star, uh, the abundance uh, pattern of the higher mass elements are, uh, can be reproduced by the uh, neutron, uh, rapid neutron capture process called R process very well, but 
match it on the low Z region with that simulation. And for another example, uh, the another star, abundance pattern of the stars, uh, doesn't completely agree with that uh, R process simulation. So these differences let us think that the question of maybe we need another nuclear synthesis needed, such as uh, R process freeze out or the weak R process. And uh, the uh, and I will, talk, I will talk about the story of the weak R process. And in order to explain these uh, differences, uh, uh, the new process we call weak R process is suggested to create the low Z elements. And one proposal for this model, uh, studied by Treguilio and Montes et al., is that incomplete R process with the low neutron to seed ratio. And uh, in the neutrino-driven wind scenario at the Coca-Cola supernova, the temperature decreased down to 4 gigakelvin. The charged particle reaction falls out of the nuclear statistical equilibrium. And uh, the charged particle reactions, uh, such as alpha xn reactions, build up more on low Z elements. Uh, the right uh, diagram shows the uh, competition of alpha N or beta, uh, beta decay or N gamma. And since the neutron to seed ratio is small, the N gamma reaction doesn't occur, uh, while the alpha N uh, reaction occurs more dominantly. And the uh, left uh, nuclear chart movie, I hope you can see the, uh, the movie. But uh, the, this uh, shows the uh, uh, process flow of this model. And you can see that the path reaches faster on the low uh, Z is equal 40 region, uh, which is above the R process path. And uh, so uh, it is uh, clear that the alpha XN reactions are uh, important uh, to, uh, is, uh, to explain this. And, yeah. and, and, and also uh, this model clearly uh, demonstrate, produce the abundance pattern uh, very well compared to the observed one shown on the left plot. So, uh, yes, uh, so alpha accident reaction is very important. And now uh, we need to check how this, the alpha and cross-section, the uncertainty of the cross-section reaction rates are, uh, uh, how good it is. and. Uh, Recent sensitive studies by uh, Pereira and Montes uh, show the uh, um, calculated alpha and cross section uh, reaction rate uh, uh, for the different model and different input parameters of the code. And uh, the, they first uh, look at the stable nuclei case. Uh, the left plot shows the example of uh, Neon 21 alpha N. And uh, this plot shows the y-axis of uh, ratio between ratio of the reaction rate between theoretical calculation and the experimental measurement. And you can see that they are very similar to the measurement. And uh, the right, uh, so th the left figure is for the different uh, uh, model. Uh, so you see that TALIS 1 and TALIS 2, which is uh, TALIS 1, TALIS and non smoker is a different model, and TALIS 1 is uh, using the default parameter setting for, of the, the code, and TALIS 2 is the uh, change the setting uh, similar to the non smoker, and they are very similar. And the right plot shows the case of potassium 41 of N, uh, the same plot. Uh, with the uh, different uh, input parameters for the TALIS 1 and 2, and they also see uh, very similar, and, uh, uh, and also very similar to the, compared to the experiment. And how about neutron-rich uh, nuclear case? And uh, the answer is uh, no, that they are very uh, different. So they show the uh, uh, reaction uh, ratio, rate ratio, uh, for the selenium 86 case, uh, because they, did, they didn't have the experiment value measurement, they only compared the simulation to different model. 
and they could they found that uh, it was differed by a factor of five uh, between two models, uh, and uh, they, when they changed the uh, alpha optical model input parameters for the same model, uh, it became uh, the more than an order of magnitude difference uh, in the case of selenium eighty five. So uh, alpha and reaction rates that largely depend on the reaction cause and input parameters for the uh, neutral rich nuclei. And uh, even though uh, the alpha and reaction became very important, unfortunately, the no experim experimental knowledge of alpha X and cross sections uh, for neutron rich uh, existed, except the uh, C around C is 50. And this uh, nuclear chart shows the X from the database uh, from X4 compiled by Zach Meisel, uh, showing that the R, weak R process path is far away from the database that we have uh, so far. And I marked the stars uh, with the important reactions that uh, uh, impact the weak R process. So Gallium-75, Bromium-85, Selenium-86, and Strontium-94. So these are the important measurement that we need to, to understand the weak R process. So, uh, yes, so it is uh, very important to uh, perform the uh, measurement of the alpha and cross section. However, uh, it is very difficult because the, uh, the, the neutron rich nuclei are uh, very short lived and we cannot use that beam as a target, isotope as a target. Instead, we have to use uh, the, the isotope as a beam and uh, alpha as a target, which is called the alpha and reaction in inverse kinematics. So we measure the neutrons and uh, recoils uh, as outcome to, uh, to measure the cross section of reaction, cross section of the uh, reaction. But the difficulty or challenge of this in inverse kinematics is that uh, you have large range of neutrons energy is coming out as a, as a function of angle. So the plot here is that the simulated kinematic curve for the gallium 75 alpha and reaction in inverse kinematics. So we need to have a detector covering, uh, uh, having a high efficiency uh, for the large range of the high energy neutron as well. And uh, it is well known that the long proportional counter with the uh, neutron moderation technique uh, can have high efficiency for the relatively high energies. So uh, we chose this method, modified to be efficient for high energies uh, and with the flat efficiency curve as a function of energy because energy will not be measured. Uh, energy of the neutron will not be measured. So does Habanero. So Habanero stands for heavy ion accelerate beam induced alpha neutron emission ratio observer, or the spicy pepper, shown on the right here. And uh, that consists of uh, high density polyethylene plastic with the uh, 80 centimeter long and 71 centimeter width and height. And uh, thir 36 helium-3 long counter and 44 BF3 counter, uh, long counter tubes are uh, inserted into the metrics of this uh, polyethylene plastic. And I want to point out that this is the first long counter neutron detector used for the nuclear reaction studies. So the beam comes in, so the left uh, picture sh uh, shows the detector design. The beam comes into the middle of the hole of the detector and the alpha and reaction happens in the middle of the detector and neutron comes out and detected by this uh, habanero. And the right uh, is, uh, shows the uh, uh, photo of uh, the habanero, extra habanero setup uh, with sample tube. Uh, so after we developed this, we brought Oh, sorry, uh, I have to explain one more thing. So uh, we uh, simulate uh, the MCMP6, uh, which is good for the neutron simulation uh, for the uh, design. And we had, uh, this is the uh, plot for the simulated efficiency as a function of energy and angle. And you can see that 
the efficiency as a function of energy is very flat. So we had the uh, 20, uh, in the uh, neutron energy, energy of neutron uh, between 100 kV to 20 MeV, the efficiency was uh, 22% in average, plus minus 5%. So it's very high efficiency for the high energy of neutron. So once we developed this, we brought it down to uh, Ohio University, uh, Edward Accelerator Laboratory, uh, which uh, they can provide the monoenergetic neutron beam uh, by accelerating neutron beam bombarding to the uh, uh, neutron gas or uh, triton, uh, triton uh, to create the, the neutron. And uh, we use a seven millimeter diameter collimator uh, to make a small beam. And then uh, that arrived to the our half of a half a neuro detector setup. So right uh, uh, picture shows the uh, design of the table that we can measure the efficiency for the different angle uh, uh, in theta and phi. So that's how we set up. And we had three different energies, which is about 4 MeV, 7 MeV by DDN reaction, and four, uh, 14 MeV by TDN reaction. And this is the photo of the commissioning. <clears throat> Since the uh, BF3 tubes are hazard material and uh, helium 3s are ex <clears throat> exported uh, control uh, materials, we had to seal and lock them up and put, uh, we had to ship it with the des designated driver and designated truck. Uh, you can see on here, there's only one hour uh, tube, uh, the uh, drums in, in one big truck and moved down to Ohio. And the top right one shows the collimator, how we can make a small uh, beam spot. And the right one shows the table, the actual table, that how we can rotate it. And uh, the bottom one shows the Hendrik Schatz and uh, uh, Zach Meisel uh, is trying to rotate the detector to set up the angle. Okay, so here's the preliminary results. So uh, the left, uh, uh, plot shows the uh, energy uh, distribution uh, for different three three different energies, and you can see that it was about one MeV uh, bullet bullet half maximum for the different three energy. Uh, we measured the uh, efficiency for five steps of uh, theta angle and five steps of uh, phi angle as well. And the right plot shows the efficiency measured efficiency as a function of uh, energy, the neutron energy, and the blue is the measured data, and uh, the orange one is the simulated data. So uh, the idea is that we, we want to find the scaling factor between the measured and the MCMP simulation to get the, uh, uh, to get the full uh, function of the efficiency and that's the half of detector, so we have to also extrapolate that efficiency to the full setup, so we can use that efficiency for our actual uh, experiment, alpha and experiment. So uh, we will, uh, we are almost end of the analysis to get to that part, so uh, we will uh, present later. And so, uh, as I explained earlier, um, uh, so uh, we develop our detector to uh, to detect the neutron from the reaction of alpha n, and first uh, we uh, we measure the alpha n cross section for the gallium seventy five shown here. So we brought the detector came back to the uh, real three NSCL, and then we performed the uh, gallium seventy five alpha n experiment. Uh, this is slide shows the layout of real three beam line. NSCL. Gallium 75 is created by the in-flight method and then uh, stopped by gas stopper and collected at the EV charge breeder and re-accelerated uh, by LINAC and delivered to the experimental station. We had uh, five uh, beam energy steps between uh, 2.71 and 4 MeV per U corresponding to the temperature of 3. Astronomical temperature of 3.5 to 5.3 gigakelvin of our interest. 
And the gallium 75 beam is bombarding to the alpha particle in the middle of our habanero detector. And then a uh, neutron, uh, energetic neutron comes out and thermalized uh, by a polyethylene and captured by the proportional tube. And position sensitive ion counter is uh, installed at the down, downstream of the, uh, our setup uh, to, uh, to provide the beam profile, such as the beam normalization or beam contaminations. Uh, yeah. And this is the photo of actual setup to show how complicated uh, in reality. And you have so many stuff here. And this is a preliminary result of, of our, uh, uh, the, so the, the beam purity of gallium 75 was very good. Uh, so this was, uh, we had 95% of the gallium 75 and the rest of 5% uh, from the contamination. And the left plot shows the energy PID plot in the ion counter. And you can see the red spot of the gallium 75 and the rest of the uh, stuff there. And also the beam intensity was more than 6,000 partic particles per second in average, so which was very high, uh, high intensity, that, uh, we, that more than we requested. So it was very good. And the right plot shows the position, uh, XY position plot in the ion counter. And you can see a large spot because of the titanium window in the gas cell uh, straggle the beam, and then we, you, you see the large beam spot on the ion counter side. And uh, I am so glad that I can present the uh, uh, measured cross section of the alpha N. Uh, uh, and this plot shows the cross section as a function of lab energy. And you can see uh, the experiment data and the calculated value. And I want to point out that uh, the, uh, the trend of the cross section is very different from the calculation. And uh, it is very surprising. And uh, we'll, I don't know if we have uh, interpretation of this, but we will continue on uh, this analysis. Furthermore, uh, we, all, uh, we in the, uh, the uh, nuclear physics community waiting on the AFRIP uh, operation study. And uh, when the AFRIP uh, started the operation, uh, we will have uh, a high beam intensity with the, uh, uh, since the AFRIP provides the uh, uh, accelerate the running 238 with the 400 kilowatt beam power. Uh, to bombard the uh, graphite target and it will get higher beam intensity. And this uh, nuclear chart uh, uh, with the uh, projected, uh, projected beam intensity of the AFRIP and with the overlap of relevant alpha and reactions. And you can see that the beam intensity of this region is about 10 to the 6 or 10 to the 7 or 8. And I also show the uh, list of important alpha and reactions. And, uh, and when the effort is started, we can also uh, study these uh, reactions that I'm hoping. By the way, uh, bromium-85 is already available uh, at NSCL, RIA-3 NSCL. So uh, we proposed this uh, reaction study uh, uh, last year, and then uh, it's uh, uh, approved by NSCL. 41. So we are glad that uh, we will soon uh, perform the new study of the alpha reaction. So uh, here's a summary. So uh, uh, I think it <laughs> took actually very quick compared to like practice. But anyway, so uh, there is a large di di disagreement on uh, metaphor hello stars observation of uh, uh, abundance pattern and especially for the low Z elements. And one proposal is that the, uh, uh, <clears throat> the weak up process uh, to create, to build up uh, more on low Z elements, but the alpha N reaction rates are very uncertain uh, and no experimental data exists. So experimental alpha N measurements are very important to uh, 
very important to reduce the uncertainties. And we developed the uh, neutron detector uh, to have a high efficiency for the high energy uh, neutron. And uh, we had a commissioning at Ohio University and uh, we performed the gallium 70 up, 75 alpha N reaction in inverse kinematics uh, at the RIA 3 NSCL using the habanero detector. And data analysis is close to the completion. And uh, we had the measured cross section of gallium 75 alpha N or alpha 2N was uh, very different from the cal theoretical calculation. And uh, when the effort started, we will have more studies of uh, alpine reactions. So I hope that we can continue on our campaign of alpine reaction. That's it. Okay, thank you very much for your talk. Mm -hmm. If you have questions, then please uh, indicate so in the chat. Or just go ahead. Yeah, apparently it was very clear. Actually, um, can you tell me, so where does this process exactly take place? Can you remind me again, this week R process? In the Pokola supernova. And, okay, and, and how much, I mean, we recently observed this, the, the merger, right? And we, um, and we know that a large uh, amount of material is made in, in this, Assume. Yeah, that's also possible. It depends on where is the location of uh, that process happening, right? So uh, the condition, the important condition is that uh, we need to have a low uh, neutron to seed ratio. Mm -hmm. And also the temperature has to be below 4 gigakelvin to have a charge particle. Okay, thank you. So there was also a question in the chat. And the question is, how do you discriminate between uh, one neutron and two neutron channel? Okay, yeah, so uh, that's a very important question in terms of the experimentalist. Uh, so uh, we only count the neutrons and we do have uh, uh, like, we do have like a beam profile. So we have a, uh, the neutrons correlate with the beam and uh, or we have a background. So we subtract everything and so we get uh, like multiplicity one event of the neutron or multiplicity two events of neutron or multiplicity three events of neutron. Uh, so, and then using that, I, we uh, kind of demonstrate or simulate the, uh, the case of uh, alpha n happens and detected or not detected or alpha 2n happens and detected and not detected. And then we analyze those to uh, match that uh, multiplicity numbers, and then we could get the uh, alpha n or alpha 2n cross sections from that. Is that clear answer? Or? I mean, I I think so. I understood it, but the, yeah, the person who asked the question doesn't reply. So there's another question um, from. NSCL, so please go ahead. Hey Tony, this is Jorge. Hello, Jorge. I have a question about your results, the figure with the cross-sections. Can you show it back, please? Mm -hmm. You just passed it. Oh, sorry. One, yeah, that yeah. One. So I'm really confused about that figure because I don't understand how the alpha one end channel can dominate at higher energies with respect to the alpha two end. That's a good question, actually. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So we thought that the uh, alpha two end channel should open uh, around four MeV. Yeah. So we expect to have a high cross section, but uh, apparently the measurement doesn't tell us that it opens. So. So, so the question is that how we can interpret this, right? Yeah, it's, I mean, why the alpha 2n closes somehow at higher energies at the expenses of alpha 1n? So I would expect the opposite trend, like the higher energies alpha 1n becomes less important and alpha 2n starts taking over. 
that's what the calculation shows, right? So you have uh, alpha 2n becomes more dominant as goes uh, higher energy, right? So you have uh, this I one goes up, right? Again, that might also take over at higher energies, but I don't know what is the problem for that. Mm -hmm. So, so, yes, so uh, in order to confirm that our result is reasonable, we are trying to uh, uh, approach in a different way uh, to get this number and uh, we, we did some more stuff and then we kind of like agreed. So that's why I like to present this preliminary result. Uh, but yeah, I mean interpretation is another thing that we have to Understand, so. okay. Do you have any ideas um, regarding interpretation? What what this mismatch is caused by? We haven't, yeah, we haven't discussed yet about it. So. Okay, and there was another question from Ohio University, and mm -hmm. the question is, which TALIS model did you use for this uh, cross-section comparison, and how uh, might that compare with a non-smoker calculation? Which Thales code version or? Yeah, exactly. So which Thales version and how does it compare with non-smoker? Uh, I guess Hohe can answer very well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I haven't compared this reaction. Um, I will say, let me think. Uh, for the range of energies that you have measured, probably Thales and non-smoker agree. Um, pretty well at higher energies, probably non smoker over predicted cross sections because what you get there is the inclusive cross section. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I will say that the result should be similar, but I haven't, I mean, I'm just speculating, I haven't looked at this yet. Yeah. Okay, are there further questions? I guess not. So let's thank Tony again. Okay. And see you all next time. All right. Have a nice weekend.